Yeah, this experiment is to understand the role of the atmosphere in the last triple La Nina from 2020 to 2022. And um, the experiment design is to initialize XSS2 with um, realistic ocean. So there was that the land is mistake, realistic ocean conditions, but uh, randomized atmosphere and land conditions. And um, original proposal was to initialize um, the forecast on the first of each calendar month from 2020 January to um, 2020 to December. But actually we realized that it's quite expensive. So we decided to initialize every second month uh, from the January of 2020. So just to reduce the data size. So um, as you can see in this line graph, the black line is the observed La Nina evolution, Nino 3.4 SSTs. And uh, sorry. Sorry. I, um, can everyone else mute please while Umpa is speaking? Thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks. Yeah, and um, the colored lines are the XSS 1 and 2 real-time forecasts over that period. And you can see that actually, you know, um, 2020 La Nina, the second dip, and um, the 2022 La Nina, it was kind of XSS 1 and 2 short real-time forecast kind of well captured. But how much of this um, predictive skill comes from the atmosphere versus ocean. That's kind of the question we want to address. And uh, once the data are available, we will look at um, tropical SST evolution regarding La Nina, negative IOD, or tropical Atlantic SST conditions. And we will look at the stratospheric polar vortex and southern annular mode. So uh, how much of this atmospheric large scale circulation also driven by the La Nina conditions and of course, Australian rainfall. And when the data are available, um, we'd like to make a call so that, you know, the community and even outside of our working group, people can actually, you know, look at the data and see the sensitivity of the atmosphere over the last three years. So um, yeah, as I said, like the, uh, we randomized the atmosphere, but we used the re realistic at, uh, ocean initial conditions for 2020 and 2022. So it's it will be basically 23 member ensemble. And we are running it for four months and uh, initialized on the first of each odd month. So Griff was um, just he was going to be here to report the computing uses and um, you know yeah. how much resources we will use by the end of this quarter, but I think um, he's not here. Just before wrapping up, so, uh, let me... So just in terms of storage, so um, I think Vilma put in the chat that um, most of the G data storage is still available, 75%. Um, yeah. We have 50 terabytes in total, and it looks like we have only one terabyte on Scratch, so that might be a bit of a bottleneck. So yeah. Might, so once simulations are finished, we might have to move them. Um, That's right. To G data once they are archived and processed. I don't know if there is a similar process for access S2 output as well to what we do with the uh, with the climate model in terms of converting yeah. to SF and Yeah. So just something to have in mind. Yeah, yeah, and um, we can we we should do that. And can you see this table? Yes, I'm sharing. Yeah, so the yeah. green green colored numbers are the ones already done. So we only uh, need to produce this July initialized and September initialized um, forecast for these three years and. Um, light blue colors, they were done before we actually running these experiments on using NCI accounts. 
So I think we are, we can actually finish our experiments within the quarter. Like if not, it will be only just a little bit left or roll over to the next quarter. But we will definitely let you, you Wilma and David know how yeah. it goes. Yeah. And um, once that's done, we will post the process and just keep um, SL, you know, the major va main variables. But if people want to have, um, you know, look at particular variables other than the standard variables, please feel free to let me know so that we can uh, post the process them and store them. Yes.